The concept of damned souls, a term often associated with the fate of the dead in various forms of underworlds or hells, is a pervasive and enduring theme found across many cultures and historical periods. This idea is not limited to the deceased. It can also encompass the living who are burdened by guilt and sin, experiencing a form of internal damnation shaped by their own conscience rather than any external torment. Historically, the notion of damned can be traced back to ancient civilizations, such as the Sumerians. Their mythological narratives, like the descent of the goddess Inanna into the netherworld, are among the earliest known literary depictions of an underworld. This theme continues in Etruscan art, which, around 350 BC, began to vividly portray the underworld, complete with demons like Karun and scenes of torment. In Greek and Roman literature, the concept of a punitive afterlife is personified by Hades or Pluto, rulers of a gloomy kingdom where souls like Tantalus, Sisyphus, and others endure eternal suffering. These stories vividly depict the various torments that await the damned. Christianity, while less descriptive in its scriptural references to hell, also incorporates the concept of damned. The Bible, particularly in the New Testament, contains parables and visions of afterlife punishment, though these are less frequent than in other religious texts. A notable element of Christian tradition is the narrative of Christ's descent into hell between his crucifixion and resurrection, an event that symbolizes redemption rather than damnation. Art and literature have played significant roles in shaping and propagating the imagery of damned souls. During the Renaissance, artists like Albrecht Dürer, Giotto and Michelangelo explored this theme extensively often focusing on the Last Judgment. Their works depict a vivid and sometimes terrifying vision of the fate awaiting sinners. Literature, too, offers rich portrayals of the damned. Dante's Inferno is perhaps the most renowned, detailing a complex hierarchy of sins and corresponding punishments. Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus and John Milton's Paradise Lost explore individual damnation, with a focus on personal choices and internal conflicts rather than external settings. In the modern era, artists and writers have continued to explore these themes, often incorporating contemporary elements or reinterpreting older works. The 20th century saw artists like Robert Rauschenberg and performers like Martha Clarke drawing on historical representations of hell to create new, often secular interpretations of damnation. The concept of damned is not confined to Western tradition. In Japanese art, hellish torments are vividly depicted, as in the tales of Fujiara. Similarly, at the Angkor Wat temple complex in Cambodia, reliefs illustrate both heavenly and hellish realms, with explicit portrayals of the punishments meted out to the damned. The idea of damned, whether as a religious belief, a psychological state, or a theme in art and literature, demonstrates its deep-rooted presence in human culture. It transcends geographical and temporal boundaries, illustrating a universal fascination with the fate of the soul and the moral dimensions of human actions. This artifact, dating back to the ancient Mesopotamian era, represents Erish Kigo, the revered goddess of the underworld in Mesopotamian mythology. Erish Kigo, as depicted in this terracotta figure, is presented in a nude form, which is significant in ancient Mesopotamian art. The nudity likely symbolizes a form of power and primordial essence as Mesopotamian deities were often depicted in such a manner to emphasize their supernatural and elemental nature. As the ruler of the underworld, Erishkigal was associated with death, afterlife, and a form of divine justice, 
holding sway over the fates of souls after death. The figure's craftsmanship, typical of Mesopotamian terracotta work, exhibits simplistic yet expressive features. These figures were not just artistic expressions, but also held religious and cultural significance. They were often used in rituals or as votive offerings, playing a key role in the spiritual practices of the time. The intricate art of ancient Mesopotamia is vividly showcased in a remarkable Sumerian cylinder seal impression. These cylinder seals, small cylindrical objects often crafted from stone, were the keystones of Mesopotamian artistry and communication. The seal in question not only served a practical purpose, such as sealing documents and containers to signify ownership and authenticity, but also displayed a high level of artistic mastery. It depicted the harrowing mythological scene of Junuzid, also known as Tammuz, a deity linked with fertility and agriculture in the underworld. In this specific seal, Dumuzid is seen being tormented by gala demons, an image derived from the ancient poem Inanna's Descent into the Underworld. As the story goes, after Inanna, Dumuzid's wife, escapes the underworld, these relentless demons demand a replacement. They first attempt to take Inanna's faithful servants and mourners, but Inanna refuses to let them be taken. Eventually, they find Dumuzid lavishly dressed and at ease, which angers Inanna, leading her to decree that Dumuzid should replace her in the underworld. The seal's portrayal of Dumuzid, flanked by snakes, is especially potent. In Mesopotamian mythology, snakes symbolize both death and renewal, reflecting their ability to shed their skin. This imagery likely represents Dumuzid's cyclic fate of spending part of each year in the underworld, a narrative common in myths about fertility gods. The presence of snakes underscores the transformative nature of his journey and the duality of life and death. This work originates from Thebes, specifically the tomb of Queen Nerit Amun, and it is a quintessential example of ancient Egyptian funerary art. The scene depicted in this papyrus is one of the most iconic in Egyptian mythology, showcasing the god Anubis, the jackal-headed deity associated with mummification and the afterlife in the act of weighing the heart of the deceased. In ancient Egyptian belief, the harp was considered the seat of the soul and was weighed against the feather of Mart, the symbol of truth and justice, to determine the worthiness of the soul to enter the afterlife. Anubis is typically shown operating the scales on which the heart is weighed. The outcome of this weighing determined whether the soul would be granted access to the field of reeds, the Egyptian conception of paradise. If the heart was found to be heavier than the feather, it was believed to be consumed by Amit, a demoness, effectively annihilating the soul. The artwork on the papyrus is executed in the linear, stylized form typical of Egyptian art, with careful attention to detail and symbolism. Each element, from the depiction of Anubis to the scales and the feather, is laden with religious significance. The amphora vividly portrays Sisyphus, a figure in Greek mythology who was condemned to an eternal punishment in the underworld. He is depicted laboriously pushing a massive boulder up a hill, only for it to roll back down each time he nears the summit. This endless cycle of effort and futility symbolizes a damned eternal punishment, resonating with the broader theme of eternal struggle and the consequences of one's actions in life according to ancient Greek beliefs. The painting Sisyphus by Titian, created in 1548 to 1549, is part of his renowned The Four Condemned series and is housed in the Prado Museum in Madrid. Titian, a master of the Italian Renaissance, is celebrated for his remarkable use of colour and pioneering contributions to painting. The depiction of Sisyphus in this series is particularly striking. 
Titian captures the physical strain and eternal torment of Sisyphus with dramatic realism. The use of light and shadow, along with his robust color palette, highlights the physicality of the scene and the psychological burden borne by Sisyphus. This not only illustrates the myth, but also delves into the human condition, exploring themes of endless struggle, futility, and the consequences of one's actions. The four condemned series, which includes paintings of other figures who defied the gods, is a profound exploration of human suffering and divine punishment. These works are reflective of the Renaissance period's interest in classical mythology and its moral and philosophical implications. The Hell Mosaic in the Cathedral of Torstello, Italy, is a notable example of Byzantine art from the 12th century. This mosaic is part of a larger composition known as the Last Judgment, which covers the west wall of the Cathedral of Santa Maria in Torcello, an island near Venice. Byzantine mosaics are renowned for their intricate designs, vibrant colours and use of gold tessera, which give them a distinctive shimmering quality. The Hell Mosaic in Torcello is a vivid and detailed representation of the concept of hell as understood in Byzantine Christianity. It depicts various scenes of punishment and despair, resonating with the Byzantine cultural and religious perspectives on sin, redemption and the afterlife. The imagery in this mosaic is stark and often graphic, illustrating the torments awaiting the sinful souls in the afterlife. This serves as a moral reminder to the faithful, emphasizing the consequences of straying from the righteous path. Giotto's The Last Judgment fresco, painted in 1305, is located in the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. This fresco is a masterwork of the early Renaissance, showcasing Giotto's pioneering techniques that marked a departure from the stylized forms of medieval art. In this fresco, Giotto depicts the last judgment with dramatic intensity and emotional depth. The scene is divided between the saved souls ascending to heaven and the damned descending into hell, with detailed depictions of angels, saints, sinners, and various supernatural beings. The fresco is renowned for its vivid portrayal of human emotion and the naturalistic representation of figures which was revolutionary for its time. Giotto's use of perspective, volume, and shading in the fresco was groundbreaking, moving away from the flat, two-dimensional style of Byzantine art. This fresco is celebrated for its role in the development of Renaissance art and for its profound impact on the course of Western art history. Lorenzo Maitani's The Last Judgment is a remarkable relief sculpture on the façade of the Cathedral of Orvieto, Italy, dating to around 1320. Maitani, an Italian sculptor and architect, played a significant role in the design and decoration of the Orvieto Cathedral, one of the masterpieces of Gothic architecture in Italy. The Last Judgment relief is part of a larger decorative scheme on the cathedral's façade, which includes a series of carvings and sculptures that depict various biblical stories and themes. Maitani's work on this relief is an exceptional example of Gothic art. In this depiction of The Last Judgment, Maitani presents a vivid and detailed portrayal of the final reckoning, where souls are judged and sent to their eternal fates. The composition typically divides the saved and the damned, illustrating the joys of heaven and the torments of hell. The figures in the relief are rendered with a sense of movement and emotional intensity, which was a significant development in Gothic sculpture, moving away from the more static and formalized figures of Romanesque art. Nardo di Seon's fresco Last Judgment, Hell, created in the 1350s, is a significant piece of Gothic art located in the Strozzi Chapel of the Santa Maria Church in Florence, Italy. Nardo was an Italian painter of the Florentine school and the brother of the renowned artist Andrea Orcagna. This fresco is part of a larger series depicting the Last Judgment, 
a common theme in medieval Christian art. In this segment of the series, hell is portrayed with vivid detail, depicting the torments and despair of the damned. Nardo representation of hell is consistent with the medieval Christian understanding of the afterlife, where sinners faced eternal punishment. The fresco is characterized by dramatic imagery, with various figures shown in states of suffering, which serves to illustrate the consequences of sin and moral corruption. The use of color, composition, and expressive figures in the fresco is representative of the Gothic style, which emphasized emotion and naturalism more than the preceding Byzantine tradition. Nardo work demonstrates an advanced understanding of these artistic principles, contributing to the evolving style of Italian Gothic art. The Hell Manuscript Illumination by the Limburg Brothers is an exceptional example of late medieval art. The Hell Illumination is a vivid depiction of the medieval concept of hell, characterized by a meticulous attention to detail and a rich, vibrant color palette. The scene is filled with imaginative representations of torment and despair, as was typical in medieval depictions of hell. Various damned are shown undergoing different forms of punishment, each tailored to their earthly sins, reflecting the medieval belief in divine justice and retribution. One of the striking features of this illumination is the use of color and light to convey the fiery atmosphere of hell and the chaotic nature of the damned's suffering. The Limber brothers' skill in rendering complex scenes with emotional depth and visual clarity is evident in this work. This work is a prime example of Northern Renaissance art and showcases van der Weyden's skill in using oil paints, a medium that was gaining popularity during this period. The painting depicts the Last Judgment, a common theme in Christian art, portraying the moment when Christ judges the souls of the dead to determine their eternal fate. Van der Weyden's interpretation of this theme is noted for its emotional intensity and meticulous detail. The central figure of Christ is typically shown in majesty, surrounded by apostles, saints, and angels, while the lower sections of the painting depict the resurrection of the dead and the separation of the blessed from the damned. One of the striking features of van der Weyden's The Last Judgment is the vivid portrayal of the figures and their expressions. The artist's use of oil paint allows for a rich depth of color and fine detail, enhancing the dramatic impact of the scene. Each figure is rendered with individualized features and expressions, conveying a range of emotions from hope and awe to fear and despair. The composition of the painting, with its clear delineation of heavenly and earthly realms, reflects the religious and philosophical ideas of the time. In the late 15th century, Sandro Botticelli, one of the most renowned artists of the Italian Renaissance, undertook a remarkable project to illustrate Dante Alighieri's Inferno, part of the epic poem, The Divine Comedy. Created in the 1480s and early 1490s, these illustrations are significant not only for their artistic merit, but also for their interpretation of one of the greatest works of Italian literature. Botticelli's illustrations for Inferno are housed in two major collections, in Berlin and the Vatican Library in Rome. These works are exemplary of Botticelli's skill and artistic vision, showcasing his ability to translate complex literary narratives into compelling visual imagery. In these drawings, Botticelli visualizes the journey of Dante through hell, guided by the Roman poet Virgil. Each illustration corresponds to a canto, section, of Inferno, depicting various circles of hell and the diverse punishments inflicted upon the souls of the damned. Botticelli's illustrations are renowned for their attention to detail, composition, and the vivid portrayal of Dante's imaginative landscape. What makes these works particularly notable is Botticelli's ability to capture the emotional intensity 
and symbolic depth of Dante's poem. He brings to life the allegorical and moral dimensions of Inferno through his art, creating images that resonate with the poem's themes of sin, redemption, and divine justice. The fact that these illustrations were created during the Renaissance, a period of renewed interest in classical literature and humanistic studies, is significant. Botticelli's work reflects the contemporary intellectual and cultural milieu, wherein artists were engaging deeply with literary texts and exploring new ways of visual representation. The Dand Cast into Hell by Luca Signorelli, painted between 1499 and 1504, is a striking fresco located in the San Brizio Chapel of the Orvieto Cathedral, Italy. This work, measuring an impressive 23 feet wide, is a vivid representation of the Last Judgment, a common theme in Christian art inspired by the Gospel of Matthew. The fresco is divided into two main sections. In the upper part, the archangels Michael, Gabriel and Raphael, clad in armour, oversee the scene, symbolising divine oversight and judgement. Their presence underscores the gravity of the moment, as they witness the unfolding chaos below. The lower section is where the drama intensifies. It depicts the damned, nude men and women, their bodies twisted in anguish, surrounded by demons in garish colours. These figures are shown being dragged or falling into a fiery abyss, a graphic portrayal of the horrors of hell. The emotions of fear, despair and pain are vividly captured in the expressions and postures of the damned, showcasing Signorelli skill in rendering human emotion and form. Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delight, created around 1505, is a mesmerizing and enigmatic oil painting located in the Prado Museum in Madrid. This masterpiece is part of Bosch's renowned triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, which consists of three panels depicting different aspects of human existence. In the Hell panel, Bosch delves The damned are subjected to a variety of bizarre and gruesome torments, reflecting Bosch's moral and religious beliefs about human sinfulness and the consequences thereof. One of the remarkable aspects of this painting is its intricate detail and symbolism. Every element in the composition has a symbolic meaning, and deciphering Bosch's complex iconography has been a subject of scholarly study and debate for centuries. Albrecht Dürer, one of the most prominent figures of the Northern Renaissance, created Christ's Descent into Limbo in 1510. This woodcut is housed in the Harvard University Art Museums in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and is an exemplary piece of Dürer's skill in this medium. The woodcut depicts the moment from Christian theology known as the harrowing of hell, where Christ, following his crucifixion, descends into limbo or hell to save the souls of the righteous who died before his coming. This scene is a powerful representation of redemption and salvation. Dürer's mastery is evident in the intricate details and the dynamic composition of the woodcut. The figures are rendered with a level of detail and expressiveness that is remarkable for the medium. Christ is often depicted as a commanding presence, radiating divine light amidst the darkness of hell. His figure is usually shown bringing hope to the souls awaiting salvation, who are often portrayed with a mix of awe and relief. The use of contrast in this woodcut, between light and dark, and the detailed expressions of the figures, adds to the dramatic intensity of the scene. Dürer's technique showcases not just his artistic skill, but also his deep understanding of the religious themes he is depicting. Michelangelo's The Last Judgment, created between 1534 and 1541, is a monumental fresco located in the Sistine Chapel in Rome, Vatican City. This masterpiece is one of the most iconic and celebrated works of Renaissance art and is a testament to Michelangelo's unparalleled talent and artistic vision. The Last Judgment, 
occupies the entire altar wall of the Sistine Chapel and is considered one of Michelangelo's greatest achievements. The fresco depicts the climactic moment of divine judgment where Christ judges the souls of the dead, sending them to either heaven or hell. The composition is a complex and dynamic portrayal of the event, with numerous figures filling the vast space. One of the striking features of this fresco is Michelangelo's masterful portrayal of the human form. The figures in The Last Judgment are rendered with a level of anatomical precision and emotional intensity that was revolutionary for its time. Michelangelo's deep understanding of anatomy and his ability to convey complex emotions through the physicality of the figures is evident in every detail of the fresco. The composition is divided into distinct sections, with the saved souls ascending to heaven on the left side and the damned souls being cast into hell on the right side. The central figure of Christ, with his outstretched arms, serves as the focal point, radiating divine authority and judgment. The Last Judgment is not only a masterpiece of artistic technique, but also a profound theological and spiritual work. It reflects the religious and philosophical ideas of the Renaissance period, including the complex relationship between humanism and Christianity. The fresco was created during a period of significant cultural and religious change, and it captures the intellectual and spiritual currents of the time. Peter Paul Rubens' The Fall of the Damned, created around 1620, is a captivating oil painting housed in the Gemald Gallery in Munich, Germany. This monumental work is a testament to Rubens' mastery of the Baroque style and his ability to convey powerful emotions and dramatic narratives through art. The painting is characterized by its dynamic composition, rich color palette and dramatic lighting. The damned souls, shown in various states of despair and agony, are cast down into the abyss by a host of dark and menacing angels. The chaotic and tumultuous scene conveys the chaos and terror of damnation. Rubens' skill in rendering the human form is evident in the intricate details of the figures, each of which exhibits a unique expression and posture. The artist's use of chiaroscuro contrasts between light and dark adds depth and dimension to the composition, enhancing the dramatic impact of the scene. The Fall of the Damned is a reflection of the religious and moral concerns of the Baroque era, a period when the Catholic Church played a significant role in shaping art and culture. Pierre Sableras' Caroon Passing the Shades, created before 1749, is a captivating artwork held in the Louvre Museum in Paris. This painting captures a moment from Greek mythology, depicting Karun, the ferryman of the underworld, as he transports the shades of the deceased across the river Styx to the realm of the dead. In this composition, Karun stands prominently in the centre of the scene, holding an oar and guiding the souls aboard his boat. The souls, represented as ghostly figures, gather at the edge of the river, awaiting their passage to the afterlife. Sableras skillfully captures the ethereal quality of these shades, who are depicted in various states of contemplation, acceptance and apprehension. The painting's colour palette is dominated by muted tones, with an emphasis on the spectral and otherworldly atmosphere. The artist's use of chiaroscuro adds depth and drama to the composition, highlighting Karun as the central figure and creating a sense of foreboding. John Flaxman's A Soul Appearing Before the Judges in Hades, created as a drawing in 1783, is a thought-provoking artwork housed in the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, England. This drawing portrays a moment from Greek mythology, depicting the soul of a deceased individual facing judgment in the underworld. In this composition, the soul is presented before the judges of Hades, who hold the power to determine the soul's fate in the afterlife. Flaxman's drawing conveys the solemnity and gravity of this moment, 
with the judges depicted as authoritative and imposing figures. The soul, portrayed as a delicate and ethereal being, stands in a vulnerable position, awaiting the verdict of the judges. The drawing's composition is characterized by its classical simplicity and clarity, reflecting Flaxman's affinity for neoclassicism, a prominent artistic movement of the late 18th century. The use of clean lines and minimalistic details enhances the focus on the central narrative, emphasizing the significance of the soul's judgment. Eugene Delacroix's Dante and Virgil in the Underworld was created in 1822. This artwork is inspired by Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, specifically the segment depicting Dante's journey through the realms of the afterlife, guided by the Roman poet Virgil. In this painting, Delacroix brings to life the moment when Dante and Virgil descend into the eerie and foreboding landscape of the underworld. The scene is shrouded in an otherworldly atmosphere, with swirling mists and eerie, ghostly figures lurking in the shadows. Dante, the central figure, is depicted in a state of awe and trepidation as he takes in the sights and experiences of the infernal realm. Delacroix's use of colour and light is remarkable in this painting. The play of light and darkness adds to the sense of depth and mystery, with Dante and Virgil illuminated in contrast to the surrounding darkness. The composition draws the viewer's eye to the central figures and their emotional journey. The painting captures the essence of Dante's narrative, emphasizing the existential and moral questions raised in the Divine Comedy. It reflects the Romantic movement's interest in literature, mythology, and the imaginative, as well as its fascination with the emotional and psychological aspects of human experience. Edward Byrne Jones' Souls on the Bank of the River Styx, created between 1871 and 1872, is a captivating artwork held in the Nahum Collection in London. This painting draws inspiration from Greek mythology, specifically the concept of the river Styx as a boundary between the world of the living and the realm of the dead. In this composition, Byrne Jones portrays a group of souls gathered along the banks of the ominous river Styx. The river is depicted as dark and foreboding, serving as a barrier that separates the living from the afterlife. The souls, depicted in a dreamlike and ethereal manner, are waiting passage across the river by Karim, the ferryman of Hades. Byrne Jones' work is characterized by its pre-Raphaelite style, marked by meticulous attention to detail and a focus on vivid color and symbolism. The painting exudes a sense of otherworldly beauty, with the souls appearing delicate and melancholic in their contemplation of the journey ahead. Robert Rauschenberg's 34 Drawings for Dante's Inferno, created between 1959 and 1960, is a notable collection housed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. This series of drawings is a contemporary interpretation of Dante Alighieri's Inferno, the first part of his epic poem, The Divine Comedy. Rauschenberg's drawings offer a modern and abstract perspective on Dante's literary journey through hell. Each drawing presents a unique and experimental visual interpretation of specific moments or themes from the poem. The artist's use of various media, including college, printmaking and drawing, adds a dynamic and multidimensional quality to the series. The portrayal of the Buddhist hell of repeated resuscitation as depicted in the Kitano Tenjin Enjai Yamaki, Scroll 7, 1219, is a striking and symbolic representation of the Buddhist concept of hell. This particular scene is observed by Kongo Zeo Bodhisattva and Nichizo, adding a spiritual dimension to the narrative. In this detailed artwork, the viewer is immersed in a vivid and intricate depiction of the Buddhist concept of hell. Souls are shown undergoing a cycle of repeated resuscitation, symbolizing the never-ending cycle of suffering and rebirth that is central to Buddhist beliefs. 
The tormented souls are subject to various forms of punishment and trials, reflecting the consequences of their actions in life. This artwork serves as a visual representation of Buddhist teachings on karma, rebirth, and the path to spiritual awakening. The Judgment of Yama, Hindu Lord of Death, is a stone relief found in Angkor Wat, Cambodia. This remarkable artwork is part of the extensive temple complex and reflects the influence of Hinduism on the art and culture of the Khmer Empire, particularly during the reign of King Suryavarman II in the 12th century. In this stone relief, Yama, the god of death and justice in Hindu mythology, is depicted presiding over the judgment of souls in the afterlife. The relief conveys a sense of solemnity and divine authority, with Yama shown as a dignified and powerful figure. Souls, represented as individuals, are presented before him to account for their deeds in life. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.